what we'll do is we'll talk about landscaping now. And we'll, like I said, uh, we'll talk about shade, uh, planting shade trees and windbreaks. Um, we'll look at how do we assess a site and walk around your landscape and, and design uh, the shade and windbreaks. Um, we'll look at uh, some maintenance tips as well. So um, again, this, this is uh, beneficial for those that, that might own a home because you can go easily go out and plant trees or shrubs and it, it might take a while for them to grow. It could be five to 10 years or more uh, for uh, uh, mature, fully grown trees. Um, but if you're looking at um, you know, two different options, maybe uh, two different houses, again, you can compare that and see um, where you might save on energy just based on the landscape. So the orientation on, on, on what side of the house the trees are located, uh, that's gonna really be uh, the deal breaker, okay? So you want the trees and shrubs and things to be primarily on the south side of, of the building, perhaps to the west and southwest. And what that does is then it casts most of that heat um, a shadow onto uh, the house. And so you want uh, more of that shading to decrease the temperature. So if you have the sun just shining down on the house all day long, it's driving the temperature up, the solar heat gain. So the temperatures are higher, you're gonna spend more money on your heating and cooling, okay? And so primarily we're talking about, uh, at this point, we're talking about heating in the summer, or cooling in the summertime. So you have that hot summer sun shining down on the house, you're gonna have to run your air conditioner or your fans more often. But if you provide some shade to the south and southwest, and, and perhaps to the east a little bit for concerning, um, you know, if you go off to the east on, on that um, early morning sunlight, you might be able to block some of that early morning on the east side as well. But you typically want to have them um, to the south. And, and there's no reason to have them on the north because the sun is never to the north of your house. So it's not going to do any good shading um, from that vantage point. Um, I, I've included just one statistic there from a study that saw 30% lower air conditioning bills in the summer. Um, and I, I forget if they were doing how much shading they were doing. I think they had like roof shading of about 20% or more. Um, and that's typically a goal to aim for shading about 20% of your roof, but we'll talk about that momentarily. Now, what I will say uh, again, planting to the South is best uh, Southwest to get some of that um, afternoon light. Um, but you typically want to use a deciduous tree, which loses its leaves in the uh, winter. And you'll kind of see in that illustration why you use a, uh, a deciduous tree. It loses its leaves. And so that light can actually come through in the winter. Okay. And that's the time in the winter, in this season, you actually want that sunlight to come through. Uh, you, you need more light to come into your house, natural lighting, and you also need more of that solar heat. Uh, like we've talked about passive heating to come through. So if you plant a tree, especially to the south or something like that, you want to make sure that sunlight can get through in the winter. If you put an evergreen there, the evergreen uh, conifer, something's going to have its leaves all year round and you're not going to get that uh, light or that heat coming through in the winter. So use a deciduous tree there. There are some cases where you might have a, a lot of um, evergreens. You might want to thin those out if, if you have too many. Uh, but a deciduous one will be the best. Size of tree matters as well. Um, larger trees, and this is just broad categories, but larger trees I've, I've said are more than 40 feet. Uh, of course, those take uh, much longer to mature, um, but those larger trees are used for shading the roof, of course. The, the smaller trees, you know, 25 feet and less, um, that's, that's going to be more of shading windows and walls and things like that. So if you're Aiming for roof shading, you're going to have to pick uh, appropriate trees, and we'll go over, some, go through some guidelines and in, in, uh, tree selection and things like that. Um, uh, but uh, as I said, you typically want to aim for more than 20% of your roof to be shaded uh, and bring those temperatures down on the roof. Um, shading windows and doors also has a huge impact. The metric there at the bottom right, um, a study found that 30% increase in the insulating value and temperatures um, within the home were down 20 degrees. So quite a big effect. You, you, you can uh, see a big difference in the temperatures. And as a result, you don't have to run your heating or cooling system as much. Um, so, so there's a benefit in having those uh, trees there. 
course, you want to follow proper planting guidelines. And I, I don't have time to get into all the details on um, uh, uh, planting requirements and fertilizers and all that kind of stuff, but uh, just use your, you know, I don't have much of a green thumb anyway, but use your best knowledge and in, in planting. You connect with one of our county agents if you uh, need some more assistance in, in uh, types of plants and things of that nature. Um, but, but just from an energy standpoint is what we'll have time to address today. Um, so some of the other considerations working with the angles um, of where the shade goes is going to be important and we'll kind of touch on some ways to do that. Uh, what I do want to show is, is just with these um, trees, the, the, the trees that are planted closer to the home, uh, they provide shade sooner than, than uh, trees planted at greater distances. And so you kind of have to look at the angles involved in it and, and it might take some assessment. We'll look at um, how we do that and how we go out in, onto the property and look at that and um, assess where those sh those, uh, the shade is going to be cast. The top right just kind of shows from a bird's eye view of uh, multiple um, shrubs or trees being planted around windows. And so you, you have to account for um, the sun from morning to evening. So as it moves from, from uh, east to west through the sky, you wanna make sure that it is um, uh, blocking that light uh, or, or blocking that heat rather. Um, you may wanna permit some light to get through. And so it's kind of playing with those angles there to get uh, uh, that blockage right. And so you might need to set something up in your yard and kind of see where the uh, shadows go or you could do a more robust uh, kind of solar assessment and see where the sun's gonna be uh, at any point in time. We have some resources on our website for, for kind of uh, solar pathfinders and things like that and how you can uh, track the sun through the sky. But that'll give you an idea of how to um, aim your shadows where they need to be. Um, I also have included a note there on air conditioners, um, planting uh, shrubs or, or small trees around your air conditioner um, on a conservative basis. It, it's said to save 3% uh, on your um, air conditioner efficiency. Um, I've seen higher values than that, maybe 10%, but um, regardless, it does benefit. You, you will benefit from having uh, plants around your air conditioner, the condenser that sits outside your house. Um, so that's an option um, there as well. You don't wanna get it so close that it, that, um, it impedes the function of the, of the unit, but uh, uh, putting shade around your air conditioner unit will will benefit as well. Now we've talked about shade and we'll also talk about windbreaks and windbreaks do exactly what, what their name implies. It breaks uh, that wind that's uh, typically coming from us from the Northwest. And so um, the reason that this benefits us from an energy standpoint is that anytime you have a cool air blowing against the house, it's going to cool your house down. Okay, and so in the winter, we don't want that. Uh, winter time, you, you really don't want that wind blowing up against your house uh, because it, it can infiltrate your house. So you can get that penetration of that cold air through any of those gaps and cracks that we talked about when we talked about weatherization. Uh, it also happens by convection. So the same reason why, why you feel cool when the wind blows against you is, is based on heat convection. And so we wanna cut back on some of those uh, heat transfer by blocking the wind um, planting um, evergreens and, and other plants um, typically to the north or the northwest to block the wind. The table that I've shared on this um, um, graphic is um, showing you some of the reduction. So you'll see wind velocity if this is done properly. If you plant uh, uh, appropriate wind breaks, you can cut wind velocity by at least 50%. Uh, heating fuel. So Again, if your house is warmer because of these, then you don't need as much uh, fuel. I don't care if it's electricity or a gas furnace, whatever it may be, you're gonna use less of that heating system. So there's savings uh, to be associated with that. <clears throat> so where do you plant these? Uh, again, I'm not gonna get into the, uh, too much into the nuts and bolts of this. I can connect you with resources if you're interested, um, but typically you're gonna benefit from more than one row, okay? And so the example to the right here I've showed is uh, five different rows, uh, a little bit more robust, but two to five rows and typically staggered so that wind can't kind of wind its way through there. Um, you typically want it to be longer than the uh, wall that you're trying to protect. And so if you're trying to protect that north or northwest wall, 
you're going to probably have to extend 50 feet beyond that line so that the wind doesn't wrap around and come back towards your house. Uh, spacing, really, it's going to depend on the size of the tree and, and, and use your, your best uh, planting guide to do that. Again, a county agent could help you work with what types of trees and the distance you're planting. And then getting the, the row spacing will be important as well. And then uh, as far as um, how far out do you go, if you go 10 miles from your house, obviously it's not going to do you any good. Um, and, and so there is an optimal distance. There's, uh, it depends on the height of the tree first and foremost, but um, uh, as well as the width and the shape of the tree. But typically you're going to be somewhere between two to five times the height of your tree, um, maybe, maybe seven times. Um, but you, you want to go out that far. And so the height of the tree is, is, is going to really be what dictates that. Um, you, you really don't want to go too far from your house, but if you have a smaller yard, you're likely to be closer than that anyway. But um, you, you can try to optimize that um, based on a number of parameters. And again, I can connect you with some resources if you want more information on this. Um, the one other aspect I wanted to point towards is, is um, creating a dead air space. And so especially for those of us with smaller yards, we're gonna pull those uh, uh, trees and shrubs closer to the house to block the wind. You don't wanna get so close typically that you're trapping moisture or something up against the wall that could damage your house, but um, typically more than two feet, maybe five feet of, of space. And one of the benefits you get there is that dead air space between the wall and the tree or the bush or whatever it is. And so that dead air space it's like an extra layer of insulation. It, it protects and conserves heat within your home. And so it's not being cooled down as much. So that is one benefit there uh, as well. And so really, again, it depends on the type of plant that you're putting in. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, heat effect and urban heat effect. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of point towards the uh, photograph here uh, on the top left, there's a driveway. Um, Obviously, a surface like a driveway or a sidewalk, it's, it's during the summer and in the winter, it's, it's under direct sunlight. And so it's getting hotter than the surrounding temperature. One of the ways to improve that is, is best ways is by shading. And so you have a much cooler environment anytime you have shade. Um, even uh, ground cover like a turf grass or any kind of other plant that you have growing will be warmer than a shaded environment. So shading is always gonna be what worked the best and that's the importance of getting those shadows in the right area. And you typically wanna block driveways and sidewalks and things like that. Um, you can use light colored surfaces as well, but shade's gonna work the best. Um, and you'll really see that on, on a, a microclimate scale as well as on a larger um, environment scale. And so the, the illustration, the graph there on the bottom left shows for a city like Baltimore, you have a lot of temperature uh, being absorbed into the uh, roads, into the buildings, into uh, the parking lots. And, and so they have a lot of impervious surfaces like that that are absorbing heat. And so a city like Baltimore will have hotter temperatures just in the community than somewhere like where I'm out in Washington County. We live in a much more rural area here and it's, it's uh, a lot more natural environment, a lot more trees, especially in the shade. Shaded neighborhoods are gonna be much cooler in the rural areas because of that. So there's some impact there and that can benefit you even on a local level as you're looking around your property. The other thing, I, I've just shared some pictures on the right-hand side uh, of, of the difference between a tree and some kind of a shaded structure. So an awning or something like that, or gazebo. Typically, a tree is going to have better benefits because of the moisture that evaporates from a tree. Okay, and so there's some added benefit there. I'm not going to get in and quantify that for you, but there's typically a benefit with a living tree or shrub or plant because it has evapotranspiration. It gives off, uh, it, it absorbs heat as that moisture is given off. So a sh shaded structure will still work. Uh, but the living trees have that benefit. And, and I won't get into too much more of that. Um, as, as you go about your property and kind of assess where you put trees and windbreaks and, and things like that, I'll, I'll just give you some pointers. I'm not going to read through this, but uh, you're going to walk your property and look at the landscape. You're going to look for hills or 
slopes that will alter the wind and which way the wind is going because of that. Um, you're going to look for heat sinks like uh, the driveway. Uh, you're going to look for things like that for, for windows or something that you might need to shade. So walk around your landscape, look at that. Uh, from a climate standpoint, of course, you want to know where the sun is going to be. You're going to look at different angles, and I won't get into that today. Um, but uh, you're going to look at where the angle of the sun is from summer to winter, as well as from east to west uh, in the morning and afternoon, respectively. You want to know the wind direction and the typical wind speed. Um, it's Again, it's probably coming from the northwest, um, and you want to block that wind. But uh, you want to kind of assess some of those parameters there. And that'll help you to size and, and select uh, your trees or your shrubs or that kind of thing. And then you want to assess your home. Of course, I, I mentioned windows. You might look for uh, certain areas that you need to shade. You might look for if one side of your house has moisture on it, uh, it might need a little more sunlight to evaporate that moisture. Uh, you'll probably see those problems um, the next time it snows. You might have snow built up in, in one area and it's not melting. Sometimes that's a little easier to see. So that'll help you to decide, you know, how you want to move the wind and the sun and, uh, and cast shadows where they need to be and, and let uh, sunlight through in other areas. So those are some guidelines there. Again, I'll share this information um, uh, within the next few days if you want to go back and review it. But um, some other pointers here on site design, it's just some simple sketches. Uh, that's typically the best place to start. Uh, you know, your artistic ability uh, may be variable, but uh, in any sense, draw a simple diagram. Um, you know, the, the diagram here is showing, you know, you want to make sure that you don't obstruct your view. Uh, if you have a scenic view, uh, maybe you want to obstruct your view. If you want to block something, um, there are uh, a lot of factors to, to take into account here. And so you just want to kind of get a, a rough idea and then based on that sketch, you can kind of uh, start to uh, position your trees and plants where you, where you might want them to be. Again, you're looking at the angle between um, um, <clears throat> winter and summer as well as uh, throughout the day. Uh, and so I've just given some examples there, but uh, I won't go into more detail than that today. In terms of uh, plant selection, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm not much of a, uh, don't have much of a green thumb, so I'm not, I'm not gonna get into the planting and I'll spare you that, but uh, there's a number of resources that I shared here. There's the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service has a great handbook on conservation landscaping. Um, our own University of Maryland Extension uh, has some uh, great resources on the website. Um, and of course you can uh, connect with a county agent as well to, to help navigate some of this. But um, I, I've just copied a couple um, um, good options from uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service handbook. Um, for shrubs and trees, um, you know, and the thing I'm looking for here is, is the shape of the plant and the height of the plant and, and how well it's gonna block. But there's a number of other parameters, of course, you're gonna be concerned about the, the soil type and other factors there. Um, but these are good options and resources. Again, this will be shared on the recording and when the presentation is, is online. Um, but I won't, I won't touch on that either. Um, the last thing I'll say about landscaping is uh, to balance it with uh, the maintenance. And so, you know, if you're planting a bunch of, um, uh, you go through and do a bunch of turf grass in your property or, or some kind of ground cover, and, and now you're having to mow more property, well, th th that might benefit from an energy standpoint in, in terms of this, the heat gain. Uh, but then you're mowing the property and a lawnmower typically runs on gas or even an electric mower uh, uses energy. And so you wanna balance it there. Uh, you wanna make sure your heat gain is not um, making you use more fertilizer or more water or more gas with your mower mowing equipment. And so you kinda of wanna balance that. So I've included some just tips there to match your plants to the site conditions. Um, use native plants, uh, more woodlands uh, would be preferable, you know, more trees than, than uh, Turf grass would be uh, beneficial from an energy standpoint and, and other reasons for that as well. Um, but again, that, that's uh, just some balance to, to strike there that you're not um, um, wasting energy in other forms. Um, energy efficient um, equipment, mowers and trimmers and leaf blowers would be important. Um, 
and uh, caring for those engines and make sure they're well-tuned and, and cared for. Uh, that'll help the efficiency overall as well. 